Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening. I'm Scott Beadle with Big Fox News. The case against the man accused of stealing po political signs belonging to Congressman Tom Reed has been dismissed. Gary McCaslin pled not guilty to larceny charges back in July. The signs, which have been placed along Route 352, had GPS tracking devices. A worker for Reed's campaign went to McCaslin's home to take back the signs. Video of that interaction was then posted on YouTube. In August, McCaslin turned down an adjournment agreement that would drop the charges in six months if he stayed out of trouble and apologized to the campaign. His attorney argued McCaslin had been cleaning up many different campaign signs from the highway due to the primary election being over. The adjournment, which was entered yesterday, has no additional conditions and immediately dismissed the case. The city of Corning is close to having its zoning code updated. The city council has been working on the changes since last month when recommended changes from the planning commission were accepted. One of the most notable changes would be the old Corning Hospital site. That plot of land where First Heritage Credit Union plans to build a new headquarters would change from a residential to commercial. The city zoning code was last updated back in 1994. There are two meetings left to consider the changes. One is this Thursday, and the final meeting where the vote will take place is February 15th. If you're a longtime resident of Elmira or Corning, you probably remember the flood of 1972. A new exhibit at the Shimon County Historical Society will be dedicated to the infamous flood that rocked the area. The exhibit was created by a group of sixth grade students at Horseheads Intermediate School. The opening reception, though, was scheduled to be this past Wednesday, but had to be delayed due to the extreme weather. It's a major moment in Elmira history. It's something that anybody that was alive at that time just can't forget. It was such a big moment. The exhibit itself features photographs from the museum collection that were taken during and after the 1972 flood. So the students, they chose pictures that spoke to them on some level that interested them, and then they did research into what the picture was about, what actually the surrounding events were, and then they wrote up all the text in the exhibit. So this is completely student created. Their teacher, John LaCorey, he was actually an intern here at the Historical Society several years ago, and he has this great love for history and wanted to bring that into the classroom with his sixth graders. So he contacted us saying he wanted to do a collaboration, and we love working with students. We love bringing the next generation into the history fold. So it just seemed like a natural partnership that these students were so interested in local history, and we had a place where they could learn that history and present it. The reception to honor the students and their work will be tomorrow from 5 to 7 at the museum. The exhibit will be on display through Saturday, February 16th. Temperatures slid this afternoon. Meteorologist Kim Walker has your Big Fox forecast coming up next. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, welcome back, everyone. As we head into the early morning hours, temperatures will be below freezing, so there could be an icy mix. So uh, that will definitely affect your morning commute. And then by the afternoon, though, as those temperatures warm up a little bit, all that precipitation will fall as rain, but it's going to be a lot colder tomorrow. Rain chances for Thursday night, but then that will be changing into snow by Friday evening as those temperatures once again will be dropping. Over the weekend, we're going to see drier conditions and it's going to be cold as we make our way into tonight. I think we're going to be quiet until around 7 o'clock in the morning where there could be an icy mix that will be uh, moving in. So this will definitely affect your morning commute. But as those warmer temperatures start to move in, we are expecting this precipitation to turn into rain. So uh, I'm expecting rain throughout the afternoon tomorrow and also into your Thursday, drying out a little bit during the day on Thursday before another batch of rain heads into our area. Tonight, though, it's definitely going to be cold. We drop down to around 
21 degrees, mostly cloudy conditions with light winds coming in from the north at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow, our high only around 40 degrees. Today, it felt a lot like spring with highs in the upper 50s, but that's not going to be the case tomorrow. Again, we are going to start off with some icy conditions, and then that will transition into uh, rain in the afternoon. And then our seven day forecast calls for those temperatures to actually warm up a little bit as we head into uh, your Thursday. We are expecting a lull in activity, and then another bout of rain could be possible by Thursday evening into uh, your Friday. And then as those temperatures turn cold again, that will change into uh, snow by Friday afternoon into uh, the evening hours. Over the weekend, even though we'll see some sunshine, it's going to be cold. We start off around 17 degrees for Saturday, and our high will only be around 29 degrees. Staying with the cold air through your Sunday, and there could be some snow rain mix as we head into early next week. All right, thank you, Kim. And thanks for joining us on Big Fox News. Have a great night.